Hello, everyone, and good morning. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And I'm here to tell you that if you enjoy the show in any capacity at all, maybe I'm funny, maybe I have good guests, maybe, uh, I don't know, sometimes I'm interesting, whatever. If there's anything that you like about this show, please hit that follow button, that subscribe button, wherever you're listening. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like the videos, you subscribe to the channel, you comment, and you share. I am tired of working menial jobs and would love to speed up the process of making some money on this goddamn thing. So please, like, comment, subscribe, share, tell everyone about us, wherever you listen to the show. Follow it. it makes a huge difference. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the episode. Ty, my friend, how are you? Good, man. You? Good. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Of course. You said you almost forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, everything's so hectic right now. I'm just like... Right. Yeah. At, uh, it's funny because at the beginning of the week, I almost fucking forgot to because like I plan shit I put in the planner. But if I don't look in the planner, I'm like, that's why I put that thing up behind you. So now it's I got it in two different places. Like, I'll make sure I know shit's happening. I hear you, man. Yeah. yeah. Like I told you, I got to start <laughs> writing stuff down. That's, right. That's like necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I woke up this morning and I was like, what do I have to do today? <laughs> Train, of course. But I'm like. I felt like I had something to do, and then you hit me up, and I was like, "That's it." Yeah. <laughs> did um? Did you come? Were you training earlier today, or are you yeah, going yeah. later on, or both? Getting it in. I went on a run, uh, some shadow boxing rounds that I'm gonna go teach at four thirty. You know? Oh shit! You're teaching? Yeah, teaching uh, kids jiu jitsu. Oh nice. Force, yeah, six to nine right now. Yeah. T- teaching helps big time. Even even if you're just teaching kids. It does, man. Like. Uh, of course, like, I'm confident in my jiu-jitsu game, but, you know, it's a thing to where some people, like, I wasn't comfortable teaching other people, like, even though I knew what I was doing, yeah. like, people would ask me questions, and I'd second-guess myself, I'd be like, uh, ask coach, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, um, but, yeah, when I started teaching the kids, at first it was tough, I'm not gonna lie, like, you know, the cues to give them, they're, they're you know, they're smaller, they don't really understand right. certain words, um, and then, uh, yeah, but learning how to get through to them and teach them techniques helped me with my own technique and then being able to relate it to adults. Because if I can teach kids, I can teach adults. Right. Right. So, um, and then I just taught my first adult BJJ class the other day. How'd that go? It went well. I, yeah. People, people yeah. seem to love it. Like I, uh, I taught uh, the bow and arrow from nice. the back and then I taught like a variation of the wear a naked choke to wear like uh, you know just yeah and then, oh the different different grips yeah, to I finish yeah. This grip, yeah so do I I like that one too right I feel like it's harder for the you know opponent to fight right, right. and if you don't get on the chi- on the throat you can mash the chin exactly smush that shit exactly <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah, that's brutal it. and that that like just that bone it's <laughs> that's devastating yeah yeah no, I just, uh, yeah, though, I've been fully indulged in, in, in like, uh, in fighting life. Like, I love right. fighting. So, like, now, yeah, now that I'm teaching, I just have a different passion for it. Right, right, right. Because now, like, now you're a coach. You want to see right. your pupils yeah. fucking it's, do well. Right, it's exactly. <clears throat> exactly. And it's kind of like, uh, like, I, I kind of touched on it, but it just gives you more confidence. Like, I do yeah. this. Like, you know, like, I, like, you know another layer right yeah so when I first got my purple belt I'm like oh oh shit I got my purple belt you know yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's it's a different kind of pressure I'm pretty sure other people can relate it's kind of like alright I gotta step it up now I gotta step my knowledge up I gotta right. you know really start understanding the whys of everything you know? right yeah it is I've, I've spoken to a bunch of different coaches and they all talk about how rewarding it is to see their students pick up on something mm. Exactly. Like, uh, you know, for example, my brother, I play the guitar. My brother plays the guitar. He's younger than me. So um, the other night I had a whole bunch of people here, and he started playing, and I hadn't heard him in a while. Mm. And I was like, holy fuck, this kid, like, got pretty good. <laughs> right, okay. And I was like, damn, like, we were kind of, you know, back in the day, we would play back and forth together, and I would show him shit, and now he's like, he sounds good. So I, I, I can see how you're feeling. You see, like, you know, what, what age group do you teach? Uh, six to nine years. Yeah, so you see, like, a seven-year-old pull off a sick arm bar. You're like, oh, I taught him that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or just, like, yeah, anything. 
um, like even like uh, emotional differences. Mm. Like a kid will come in and uh, you know he's very sensitive, like to you know to anything. He falls, he starts crying, and then as the weeks go on, you see that you know he's kind of getting over that fear and kind of getting over that sensitivity issue. You know, right? It's pretty cool, even to see like little things like that. As a coach, honestly. Well, that's even more important. Right. Because that kid doesn't necessarily... They might not even be interested in fighting their passive person, but if they gain that other stuff, the self-confidence and the ability to practice and learn something, that's that's a win, too. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But now, that's cool, though, like, uh, with your brother. I, I, I always say, martial arts taught me this, like, just, man, anything you put your mind to, you can, like... You can do. You can yeah. get better at really try to master the craft it's pretty cool well you get into the routine of of failing right and and messing up and and having to go back and keep drilling and keep drilling and kind of putting your nose down so yeah. that's what people kind of get away from that right you know everybody sets a goal and they're like they set a plan but as soon as some adversity comes they're like mm, i'll Do just I back up it? off it right yeah right but if you keep doing, you know, you go to a martial arts, martial arts is hard, whatever, whichever one you do, you know, every, almost every class, you're going to take something. Yeah. Even if you're not sparring, you're going to, you know, whatever it is. Exactly. There's frustration involved. You got to right. get past. <laughs> yeah. For me, man, it was kind of weird. Like when I first started martial arts, I was, I, uh, I enjoyed getting my ass kicked. Right. I did. Like, um. <laughs> It, it was intriguing to me. I was like, how are they doing this? You know? Right. And so I had to dive into it. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's me just... me and John Larkin were speaking the other day, and he was, um, we were talking about, like, how are there pro fighters who can't do certain things? Mm. Like, how is there a Ben Askren? He's so good at wrestling but can't do anything on the feet. I know. Like, if I was sparring with somebody and I was getting my ass beat on the feet, the next day, I'm like, I'm gonna be heated. Like, in a real fight, I'd get my like, I'm I'd lose. I you know, it. I'm gonna be heated and, you know, figure out how I can get better at that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. How to be the hammer the next time out. Yeah. Right. Exactly. No matter how long it takes. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and that's that's another cool thing to where like, uh, you'll spar somebody, and you know they'll be beating you up. Um, but uh weeks will go on you'll practice you'll drill certain things you'll like uh you work on yourself and then you go back and you're giving them a good a better round yeah and then eventually you just start to catch up and then you know it's pretty it's just right it's cool i love all of that you, you know? see the progress right the, like, like you see it. of like leveling up yes yeah. it totally happens right but then what happens is some people think they know it all <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. And yeah there's exactly. no more learning involved right and Which now it's you're a fucked. Huge mistake, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Adesanya says it all the time, white belt for life. White belt for no life. No matter what it is. I love like that. Yeah. yeah. So was um Triforce and MMA, was that your introduction to martial arts or did you do something prior to that? Um I started out with jujitsu at Tim Tim oh, Burroughs. Yeah. Okay. And then John Larkin I expressed to him that, like, you know, maybe I might want to try MMA. Like, right. Just out of curiosity, at least how to punch and kick, honestly. Right. You know, it's just. And then he was like, yeah, go to Triforce, man. And then I was like, hmm, never heard of Triforce before that. Uh, just didn't even cross my mind to go there. And then I went, I tried it out. I loved it from day one. There were like a bunch of people they my age and there was a lot of them and a lot of bodies on the mat you know that's I was like okay I like this team atmosphere you know right. we're all we all seem to be chasing the same thing here and I didn't even know what I was chasing at the time I just just wanted to learn just wanted to learn more yeah. stuff I felt like BJJ was cool I loved it like um you know but I definitely wanted to get more into it martial arts everything. yeah yeah that's the cool thing about it is like <clears throat> there's so many different aspects of it right. it's just like you learn to play an instrument exactly. maybe you first start learning how to play rock and roll now it's like I want to learn how to play jazz or you know salsa some other shit you know what I'm saying exactly. so <clears throat> I mean I had a similar experience where I did um, karate since I was a child and <clears throat> after I got my black belt I was like alright I'm 
I've, I've done this for a fucking long time. Like, it's been like 10 years, 12 years. That's dope, yeah. It's time. I want to learn something new. So that's what brought me there. And that's what's cool is, like, you realize... If you never realize that there's a fault in the game that you've learned, mm. then there's so much you'll miss out on. Mm, right. Like, uh, you mean, like, you know, BJJ not necessarily being useful in the street situation? Well, more, more or less... Um, not being able to fight on your feet right whereas you know for me it was like all right karate i can throw kicks but i can't throw no punches mm. i don't know how to do I, w- I wrestled in high school so i had a little bit of that but i didn't know how to do submissions i didn't know grappling any of that shit right. so like once you realize if if you really want to learn how to be a weapon so to speak like you gotta <laughs> you gotta cover all the bases yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and man that's 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 why i fell in love with mma yeah yeah right because it's everything everything and then you take everything you learn everything you find out what works best for you what what works best for your body type everything and yeah and you take that and you put that into your fight game and then you compete with somebody else who has done the same and that's man i i I like that yeah that's probably the most interesting part about the whole thing (laughs) right that's why when a fight happens you don't even need to be a fan you're gonna watch it exactly you know big fight different skill sets different body types like that shit's that's what makes it right yeah like just recently we watched you know I don't know if you watched it but the world watched one of the best heavyweight boxing matches of all time two guys that very very different different body types different styles different backgrounds like two different parts of the fucking world right and they just came together and put on an absolute masterpiece of a show and uh, it was all like, it was all for finding out who's the baddest one, right. and that to me is that's sick. Baddest man on earth, I know. Yeah, I know. I didn't get to watch it, but I heard it was such a good fight. I'm oh man, gonna go back and watch it at some point. Oh, you got to definitely, definitely. Tyson Fury is a fucking savage of a yeah. person. <laughs> man, <laughs> uh, yeah, he got knocked down in the fight twice, twice in the same round. Wow. Yeah, and then. Wow. Was and that then, early on? I think it was the fourth. fourth. He got knocked down in the fourth. He came in kind of straight. Mm. Deontay landed a punch on his, like, forehead, wobbled him and dropped him, mm. which, like, is rare. Only Deontay can drop a That's guy with a forehead right? punch. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And then in the same round, he got up, and, and he got dropped again and then made it out of that round and boxed fucking superbly the whole rest of the fight and right. finished him. Right. Crazy. Wow. That's hard. That's yeah. determination. Oh, definitely. And, and I mean, his story is fucking bananas. It is. Going from heavyweight champ of the world to being 400 pounds, wanting to kill himself, come back, beats up, scariest dude walking, like, right. crazy. Right. Who wants to fight Deontay Wilder? Nobody. <sighs> Nobody. Especially a guy who's been out for years and hates his life. Like, right. who, would, who would think he would be the one to do it, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. No, nah, he he just hits so hard, and it's just and it's freakish, right? And it's just crazy. It's credit to him for getting as far as he did. With uh, you know, like he's not the most skilled boxer, but he still found a way in every fight. You know, to get him out of there, and that's that's the thing. Exactly, credit to him. Sometimes the most skilled fighter doesn't always win. Right. There's fights where he was being outboxed the entire fight, and he just dink. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You lost. Right. Deontay <laughs> reminds me of like street fighters. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, <laughs> just naturally gifted with power, you know, just yes. uh, Yeah. It's, it's like it's like and Ganu too. I mean he's gotten better at his technique, but at first all he had was that. Oh yeah. All he had was the power. That big overhand, right? Yeah. Right. There's something about those something in the water with those African guys. Kamaru and fucking <sighs> All them. Kamaru is a specimen, too. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be pound for pound right now. Yeah, I'd I th- say. I think he is because John Jones, being an idiot, they dropped him. Or they, they lowered him a little bit. So, I mean, Kamaru, he gets better every fight. Right. It's insane. He does, though. Um, like, I thought Gilbert Burns would give him a tough go, but, man, he handled himself. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, it's impressive, yeah. And that's, again, we're talking about styles make fights. I mean, Kamaru's a brutal wrestler, 
but who wants to be in Gilbert Burns, you know, guard? Not many yeah. people, you know. Right. But then the fight happens, and it's like it, there was no. It, he got wild. Kamara got wobbled in the beginning, but after that, it was like he just took control and was able to make it happen. Yeah. Um, just too strong. He's yeah. Too. He's too good everywhere. Yeah. It negates all your. All your all the shit that you do well. Exactly. <laughs> like the jabs that rock people or stumble people. I'm like, you see those <sighs> land from him and you're like, wow, this guy's yeah. This guy's different. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Um, now you just competed in a uh was it a jujitsu tournament or was it just like a, a fight? Just a super fight. It okay. was a uh <laughs> Submission only super fight. Oh, that's yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had eight minutes to get a tap. Um, none of us did. He was like a leg locker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This game was like kind of tricky, you know, trying to get under me, and I was trying to keep him in front of me. And, uh, yeah, we kind of just, I wouldn't say stalled each other out, but none of us really made advancements. And, but, man, that match there, like, lit a fire under my ass. Like, mm. I bonded to, I'm like, okay. How do I deal with this in the future? Yeah. You know, so how do you deal with with a style like his? Right. Oh, okay. Right. With gotcha. Someone who's just relentlessly attacking leg locks and right. right. Now, what level do you have to be to do super fights? Because they don't have like white belt super fights, right? No, they don't. But um, the promotion that held it, uh, there were blue belts there. Okay. For super fights, yeah. So. So they did only. It was like a, a super fight event. Like these guys are gonna go. These guys are gonna go. Yeah, yeah, there were oh, okay. about, like, 30 matches. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. That's pretty sick compared to, like, a tournament, because I've only done one tournament. I did tap cancer out. Right. And, um, like, you fucking sit around and you wait all day, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like, when I did wrestling tournaments, it's almost the anticipation of it kind of fucks with you. Mm -hmm. And then, like, kind of battling your way through the thing. Um, as opposed to just kind of going there and having a real good competition with one other person. It's like a fight. Right. Yeah. Right. No, exactly. Um, yeah, my opponent had gotten switched like three days out, so I wasn't prepped for the person I went against, but exactly, exactly. That adds excitement to it, though. I like that. Like, mm -hmm. like okay, I don't really know what he's going to bring. So, you know, figure it out on the fly, and I feel like that's even more of a fight. Yeah. You know, when... Hell yeah. It's kind of just like, all right, you know, let's see what you have. Right. Right. Because you only know so much. I mean, you get in a real fight on the street, you don't know what that guy's got. You don't know what he knows. You don't know what he's doing. You don't know anything. So you got to figure out. And then a weapon comes out. You got to figure that out. Right. Run the fuck away, exactly. hopefully. Exactly. <laughs> do, you, exactly. do you follow um, uh, Jocko Willink? You know who he is, the Navy, Navy SEAL? I know who he is. I don't follow him, though. But yeah. He has an interesting... Like, he's a bad motherfucker. Navy SEAL, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, like, just lifts weights all day, does crazy shit all the time. And uh, he had... He does a podcast, and he spoke about how... He's like, if you try to fight me on the street, if you're a big, hulking guy, I'm going to run away. I have no reason to fight you. Is that so? Yeah. Is that what you said? Because he... I think he has an understanding, more than most people, of where violence can actually end up. And the people who start fights, the people who look for that shit, they don't understand that. Yeah. You might be fighting this one guy, but three of his buddies are waiting for you over there. Like, bad shit exactly. can happen. And I was just going to say, before you brought that point up, like, yeah, you never know what someone knows, and it's never worth it. <laughs> it's really... That's right. Um, like, I started to learn how to fight, and I became less hot-headed than I was right. when I didn't know how to fight. You know, because, um, like, is it worth it taking it to that level with this person? You know? Right. I most likely know more than. Um, I have nothing to prove because, you know, martial arts also gives you that confidence to where it's like, I can handle myself. I don't have to be macho. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I don't have to be out there looking to, you know, puff my chest out and, you know, prove myself. But exactly, it's just. You learn that it's not worth it. Yeah. Well, that means you're taking away the right things. If you're an asshole and you learn to fight, you're just going to be a bigger asshole. Right. You know, like. That's, that, that might be true in yeah. some cases. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm sure there's fighters out there that, you know, in 
enjoy knocking people out. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever they get the chance. I got an uncle who used to do that shit back when he was younger. <laughs> right. My dad tells me stories about his brother all the time. He's like, bro, your Uncle Peter used to smack people up, and he knew how to do it. Yeah. So he would just take man. He just that. fuck people up, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, sometimes you can get the... If you get a kid, if you start him as a child, and they're like a fucking crazy kid that always wanted to start shit... Sometimes you can, like, mold them through martial arts, Right. I think. Right. Um, no, you're right. That, that reminds me of a cousin that I have. That, uh, uh, yeah, rest in peace, his soul. Uh, but, yeah, he uh, took karate growing up. He's hot-headed, always wanted to street fight. Like, you know, and he knew how to fight. Right. He had an uncle that taught him how to fight, so he'd just go around street fighting. Just, <sighs> couldn't get it out of him so you're absolutely right yeah but for me man it calmed me down like I just yeah just kind of like what you said um you you learn where violence could go yeah and god forbid you knock someone out on the concrete he falls back hits his head like, fuck him not, up for life right yeah. exactly. sued and not worth it. guilt and all this shit exactly. it's definitely not worth it ever and then or or if you just beat him up and then you just feel bad after I would feel bad after yeah 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 what took it too happen? far <laughs> what, was, what was the point of that what did that do yeah. yeah a lot of the stuff that um has been some viral shit of everyday people messing with fighters mm. um like they had the Matt Serra one where he's like kinda on mount he wasn't beating the guy up he was just being like a the guy that he's controlling was being uh, like unruly. He was being like a, a drunk asshole in a bar. In a restaurant, right? Or yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. But then you catch Joe Schilling, and I don't know if you saw this one, but he beat that dude's ass yeah, like bad. Right. <laughs> right. No. Did, yeah. Yeah, didn't care. Didn't Shit. care. Just hit him. That's right. Right. Sometimes you get the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you might catch a fighter on that day. I mean. <sighs> All in all, I always tell like I always tell the people around me like, man, don't mess with people. You don't know what they know. You don't know what they're carrying. Right. You don't know what kind of day they're having. Be respectful. Exactly. Walk away. Some people are close to just snapping. Right. (laughs) Telling you. You get the wrong (laughs) one. Just don't do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's dope. That um, the super fight was submission only. I feel like that's the coolest, coolest way to do like a a jujitsu match. Right. Hundred percent. It was my first submission only, yeah, and um, it is pretty cool though, right? Because it's kind of like all or nothing, yeah. right? You know, it's like there's no, there's no points, there's no. You know, I, I do like that. It brings a different af- aspect of it. Because I'm a competitor, and um, you know, so it brings out a different drive in you. Yes, you have to get a finish, you know. Right. And it forces you to do stuff that you would do in a real situation, mm-hmm. whether it's an MMA fight or a real fight or you're in practice. Um, when I would do jiu-jitsu, which I haven't done in a while because I don't have a school to go to, but <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot of striking over at Team United. But um, nonetheless, uh, anytime I did that stuff, I wasn't a big fan of the, you know, going under people and... Uh, even playing guard necessarily because if you're in the street you don't want to be on your back it's kind of where you end up I agree you know what I'm saying if I'm if we're in a grappling match I want to take you down and be on top because in real life I can land strikes I can do whatever the fuck I want to yeah gravity's on your side exactly so like in a in a a match where there's not really points you kind of have to throw some of that shit out the window Mm -hmm. because you can get points in I'm I'm not super familiar with the different uh, point systems, but I know that there's events where you know I think ADCC, if you pull guard, you lose points. Oh really? I think, mm. um, or it's illegal or some shit. Like you have to take them down, which I agree with. I like that. Um, but then there's other events where guys just they immediately they pull guard and it's they, cool. They sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think it's I don't know, it's unrealistic. True. Yeah. In a real life event, definitely is. Yeah. Definitely is. Um, yeah, I've heard stories about BJJ dudes. Like, I had a buddy told me one day he was out, got into a bar fight, went to pull an arm bar, and then got stomped out. And, <laughs> exactly. You know? That's, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. 
it's just like on the feet. You're not going to throw a thousand spin kicks, spin techniques, like throwing that jab, throwing the right hand, front kick, round kick, like, you know, regular shit. Mm -hmm. If you see an opening and you want to throw a spin kick, go ahead. But more often than not, you want to do the stuff that works. Exactly. Path of least resistance. Exactly. Yeah. The stuff that's not going to drain you as much. Yeah. <laughs> that too. That's a good point. <laughs> the spinning... Spinning shit isn't uh, super efficient. No, no. Not if you're not landing, especially. It's just... Right. right. Yeah, and even when you are landing, sometimes you get a fucking tough guy and you're throwing... It comes right back. Yeah. After you throw it. Yeah. Brutal. Um, so when was your last... Your last amateur fight was this year as well, right? Yeah. On yeah. July 10th of this year, I fought um, Randy Francis. Okay. Yeah, it was a tough match. Uh, my toughest match yet, I'd say. Um yeah uh, he was a veteran he had like 13 fights oh wow right it was my third fight third right? he held the belt in like a few promotions oh so it's kind of like okay going in you know but yeah I love the way the fight played out I feel like I learned a lot about myself that right. fight um, good and bad you know so I yeah was able to come away with the win yeah 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 so that's all that mattered how um now I know you're you you be choking motherfuckers out with that guillotine. <laughs> Did that happen in that fight? Um no, I got him with the uh, <laughs> I got him with the second round um uh rare naked choke. Oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, right. In the first round I did go for a guillotine. Uh he pushed me up against the fence and he had his head kinda low. Yeah. I went for it, he was he knew, he knew. So yeah. he popped his head up and then I used that to kinda just bring him up and fight him off me. I went for it a couple times. Right. <laughs> can't can't help it. Yeah. I mean, if it's there, I'm taking it. Right. You got to respect it or not. Right. Is how I feel about it. Yeah. And I know you find it from all over the place. Right. I try to, yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's just, yeah. And that's what's cool about training in a place where they all know the thing that you're good at. Mm -hmm. Because now it forces you to find different routes to it. Exactly. Or find... Um, different things you can do on the route to it like if you know you have a b and c steps to get to the guillotine if they stop you at b now you got to figure out what else you can do from b you know what i'm saying it might not necessarily be uh get to the guillotine but it could get you better position it could get you from being swept it could get you a whole bunch of different things right right which is the coolest shit right like in my second fight um he was pressuring me with the wrestling but I was just able to sink it in and, and get the win that way. And same thing in my first fight. He uh, went to wrestle up, and I caught him with it. And it's just a bunch of different ways. Like, I feel like, uh, like yeah, it can be used as, like, um, defensively with the takedowns, you know, and just threatening it. And, um, yeah, I, I really, uh, it's just a technique that I'm comfortable with. And right. Like I said, I feel like if they don't respect it, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, whether that's I roll on top or I, I snap him down and now I'm on the back. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It brings you to different places. The man, at Triforce is so hard to land guillotine. So oh, yeah. You got <laughs> you to gotta go elsewhere with your game, which is another cool thing. So now I got to work on other things. I got to, right. you know, it's like, okay, I'm, all right, but moving on, you know. That's important. Right. And <clears throat> what's interesting is because or what's interesting is that um, there's a school of thought that, I mean, I agree with both of these, but there's one that says you should get different training partners all the time for different looks, which I agree with. But there's also the idea that if you train with the same guy, he's going to pick up on your tendencies, which will hopefully help you eliminate them, which, if, you know, bring when, going into a fight not knowing what this guy knows, he if, if your thing is uh, you know one two, and this guy defends one twos all day, now you got to figure something else out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you're training with different guys all the time, then you might be able to land that one two right. a little more often. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. The, no, there's uh, pros and cons to both for sure. Um, new looks are good. Yeah. Um, sometimes I feel like sparring etiquette goes out the window with new looks, though. Like uh, that's definitely a con to it. People are trying to prove themselves rather than give you good work. Egos. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I do love getting new looks. 
you're right like um everyone has a different style essentially no matter if you go to the same school or not everyone's gonna be different because of like body type athleticism fight iq yeah right reach experience whatever it might be martial arts background you yeah know? yeah um so definitely new looks are important but i do appreciate uh, the same look more especially because the pro the point you brought up that's like a great point that um you learn your you learn your tendencies and you learn to get away from them like okay i do this a lot i need to stop doing that you know sure because they caught they they uh picked up on it started taking advantage of it so now it's like okay you know just iron sharpening iron right 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 yeah. um you brought up sparring etiquette and and you know kind of doing it the right way um where again there's a bunch of different ways that people think is the right way uh the ties they go light they play they also fight every month twice a month but you know they go light they stay <clears throat> fresh they're not trying to injure each other but then you got like you know old school boxing coaches <clears throat> you got to spar four times a week hard beat the fuck out of each other the whole time and it's like now we're starting to see as uh fight sports evolve and combat sports evolve that like we're seeing guys who are doing less sparring they're sparring lighter they're taking more precaution i mean <clears throat> max holloway he he th landed 500 strikes through 800 of them against calvin cater um no sparring he didn't spar at all he trained on zoom like crazy that's crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i mean um honestly i agree with the thai style yeah i do um i feel like hard sparring is good it's necessary to toughen you up yeah uh to learn what it is to be in an actual fight of course it's necessary um doing that too much though you're gonna break your body down you're not gonna be as fresh going into the fight you're not sure. gonna be as fresh training are you really gonna get as much training um as much out of your training as you can you know if you're all banged up your leg hurts your knee hurts your shin hurts right. whatever it may be you know um yeah i mean all fighters experience like uh injuries small injuries that we deal with you right. know during sparring but you know the more you can limit those the better so you, you, if you find partners that you can trust that are going to take care of you but still give you good work good yeah. quality work that's super important right to me i'd rather i'd rather do that and stick with that than try and uh, you know face egos and sure that, right? plus it gets to a point where you've been doing it for so long that like you know how a fight happens like you know that you can get hit you know you can hit him hard like you know that shit happens um <clears throat> so you're really kind of beating a dead horse literally uh, exactly you know the longer you're in the sport I would I would say probably lighten up on the hard spar. Probably. Right. I mean and exactly, man. Longevity is such a such an important thing for me. Um it plays into my fighting style, my training style, everything. I wanna not only do this for as long as I can, as long as I want, but after this I wanna have a you know after competing. Right. Right, right, right. You know, I think about that a lot. Uh, I love fighting get me wrong but i do know that there's life after fighting so sure you gotta take care of yourself right and there's an end date right you want to be like uh hicks and gracie who's still able to roll a little bit and practice and teach exactly because i don't I mean, want to be completely broken down right you know it is what it is though in fights it is what it is i'm a warrior I'm right go out there and put myself on the line that's why i do this i love it you know but gotta take care of yourself as much as you can you know sure that's uh i think <clears throat> floyd was talking to uh devin haney about it and he's like the key to this game is don't take punishment and i think people forget that they get into the idea of like um like you said i'm a warrior i want to go out there on my shield and if that happens if you meet a guy that everything you're doing is you know he's meeting you back okay we're gonna fight and somebody might die exactly man but if you have the option don't get hit don't take no punishment exactly yeah exactly um <clears throat> fight iq is everything i feel like yeah um 
think it's a Mike Tyson quote. It's like, a tough guy is going to get hurt in this sport. Yes. You know? Like, simply put. Yeah. Like, if you go out there and you think you're just going to bite down on your mouthpiece and, you know, get wins that way, it's just, I don't know. You know, I just don't agree with the style. Sure. I enjoy watching the Gagey's of the world. Don't get right. me wrong. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I think we all do. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. Yeah, I yeah. Do. And that's the thing. That's exactly what you alluded to. Like, one day, you know, you will get a Gaethje-type matchup where, like, man, he's going to come. Yeah. You know, so. You got to be ready for that, too. Exactly. That's why there is times where you do need to bite on that mouthpiece. Right. And, um, and do the hard sparring. And, yes. Right, right, right. right. So, yeah. yeah. I'd say I'm, I'm say that, like, I'm right in the middle with that. Like, you know, it's just, there's ways to do hard sparring where, where you both get in good work and take right. care of each other. Right. You, know? you shouldn't, if somebody gets like hurt, you shouldn't lean into them. Right. More or less. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Unless you're in a war and the guy was being a fucking dickhead to you, which does happen. <laughs> then it's like, all right, fuck you, we'll fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, there are times where I, you know, you get somebody in the body or you catch someone clean on, you know, and then they're like, well, I need a second. Mm-hmm. That shouldn't be an invitation for you to start unloading on them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> though, 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 uh, I have some uh, partners who do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, though. Um, yeah, no, I feel like it's necessary, though, to get that push to know what it's like to get your ass beat. Sure. Um, but at the same time, exactly, right? You want to take care of your partners. You don't want to just be a dickhead about it. Yeah, I feel like even if I get like get rocked in sparring or like I get hit with a good body shot, I'm always just thinking, just be cool, be the fight. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Just look, pick your shots. Right. Right. You get it back. You get it back. Exactly. Exactly. Not no rush. No need to rush. That's a good way to think about it, though. Yeah. It's like because in a fight, if you get rocked, um, you can show it two ways. Mm. One, oh that hurt, and two, I'm gonna come at you. Exactly. And both of those are bad. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. Exactly. Usually. Exactly. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it is definitely a learning tool when you get hit to... Because I do the same thing. In, my, in the back of my head, it's like, all right, that was a good shot. But if I'm in a real fight, I can't acknowledge it. You know what I'm saying? You got to have kind of a fucking poker face. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like I remember um, uh, Gaslam and Adesanya when Gaslam landed that head kick that wobbled him. He wobbled, his legs wobbled, but his face the whole time was just, I'm good, you know what I'm saying, more or less. Right. But he's hurt. <laughs> Probably hurt bad. Yeah. They went to war. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. It's just... Uh, Sometimes the gym is tough to navigate. Yeah. Because fighting and fighters tend to be emotional. Yeah. They have an idea of themselves that, God forbid, it ever gets crushed. Oh, man. You know? Yeah, you're so right. Yeah. Right. So that that's where you find some of that unruly shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah where they just go. Or where you know two guys who uh, often, you know, spar a little too hard or right. throw a little too hard, they end up going against each other, and then it's, you see an all-out fight in the gym, shit like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. You can keep that. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Most of the time, you can right. keep that, and that's why I'm like, nah, just be cool. Yeah, like, you know, he caught you, okay. Right, you know, work to get it back, work to get it back. Yeah. Now, you mentioned before we put the cameras on that um, you're preparing for a pro debut. Yeah, pro it, debut is coming out. Yeah. Is the, is there a date announced or no? Not yet. November seventh. Oh wow, okay. Right, right. Um, I have an opponent. I'm waiting for them to announce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. So we'll, we'll hold off. Yeah, right, right. I don't want to. <laughs> so has there been a difference in your mindset considering you're going from an amateur fight to a pro fight? Um, in terms of training and preparing? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Just going harder, you know. Just, it's, it's the real deal now. Gotta, right. You know, my dream chasing's hair, you know. Got to get after it. Got to gotta be prepared mentally and physically, man. Sure. Right. Um, but... Mentally, it's still the same. It's still a fight. Um, go Don't. out there and do what I do, honestly. Right. 
yeah, you don't want to overthink it and put the the pressure of the moment on yourself. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just uh, another competition. It's a big one, obviously. Um, but the the mission's the same. The same. It's always the same. To go out there and take care of business and come out with the dub, honestly. You know, right. so still still much the same. It's exciting though. You know, it's kind of like oh, it's gotta be right. It's kind of like surreal in a way. Right. You know, but I'm prepared for it. Yeah. I try not to overthink it because you know, man, you know, like uh, you have something coming up that um, if I can't stress is crazy. Yes. So like if you big time, if you overthink it, you're just gonna ruin it for yourself. Yeah. You know, I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. I th- I think the other part of it is um, not suppressing any feelings of nervousness yes like letting it be oh, like yeah. you're supposed to be nervous you're gonna go fucking fight a guy in front of a bunch of people tell like me. let it be right tell me about it yeah when people ask me if I'm nervous I tell them straight up like yeah dude yeah <laughs> you know? <I'm> like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um like yeah just both of those feelings excited but nervous it's a fight you never know what can happen but man it's a fight this is what I do this is what I love to do this is what I train to do exactly you know? so yeah. Both, both ends of that, but definitely, definitely. Right. Because, I mean, you know, we're humans. There's doubt that creeps in all the time. Right. Um, and uh, to ignore it is using your brain in a... Uh, I think you're using your brain power negatively. Be- I agree. Because you could be using that energy to just build yourself. Understand, all right, this is nerve-wracking, whatever. But you mentioned uh, fight camp and like how the buildup is brutal, and I agree with that <laughs> because it's the anticipation. You're like, all right, I gotta fight a guy in like two months. Yeah, it's in the back of your mind all the time. I don't want to get injured. Yeah. God forbid you get injured. And you're like, I, I'm not gonna pull out, but like it's you know I have an injury. Mm-hmm. So um, I bring that up to to say the last competition I had was a uh, exhibition it was just and it was on 30 minutes notice like it was was, it it was quick like I was I was at an event to watch John Larkin fight but I had been training with him for months ahead of ahead of time and helping him get ready for it and then the owner uh, Tom Evans he came up to me and he's like yo you want to fight and I'm like uh, I guess <laughs> I gotta see if I got my gear I didn't have my gear I had to use his shit no cup I had to use his mouthpiece it was fucking right. disgusting <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but my point is is I had zero stress at all like I was like alright this is you know 30, 30 minutes whatever who gives right. a fuck I've been training whereas you're in a fight camp you're thinking about that date November 7th November 7th fuck it's almost there. A week away, three days away. Yeah. It's tonight. Like, yeah, it's it's a big build up. Yeah, it is a big build up, and the day of is the worst. Yeah, you wake up and you want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up and you're like, let's let's do this. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it really is the worst. It's just like, uh, you know, I mean, think about it when a big fight's happening. Like, uh, you know, I was saying before the Tyson Fury Deontay fight, like. Uh, the whole time, 40 minutes before it, I'm like, holy shit, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. They're going to fight. You're sitting there watching it. What What are they thinking? You know what I'm saying? What are their families thinking? What are their coaches thinking? Right. You know, and, and maybe at that pro level, they're just like, it's another day. It's another fight. But maybe not. Like, if you're Deontay, you just got knocked out the last fight. You came in with a whole new crew, whole new uh, game plan. Like is this shit gonna work you know <laughs> like there's gotta be some of those some of those thoughts right exactly and you hear guys like <clears throat> Cowboy Cerrone saying like you know I'm still nervous every time throwing it out there and that's Cerrone he's a tough motherfucker you know what I mean and he's yeah. put people away so if this guy's nervous you know yeah and then you hear other fighters talk about that like you know uh, Nick Diaz just fought you know he talks about how he doesn't like fighting GSP doesn't like fighting yeah you know <clears throat> um it's interesting. It yeah. really is. Uh, the dynamics of it. Uh, yeah, the contrast between, like, you'd think... Because Mike Tyson says it, too. <clears throat> he said he would... Sometimes he would cry before his fights. Right. Like, Mike Tyson? 
Like, this motherfucker is just a marauder. He's killing people. <laughs> He's like, what are you ring. crying for? <laughs> yeah, they should be crying. <laughs> right? Which, maybe they were too. But I'm like, sure they were. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just to even hear, forget fighters, just to hear a grown-ass man be like, I, I cry before that. Like, it's, it's uh, something you don't hear super often. So, again, it goes back to my point where fighters are sensitive. They don't seem it. But, like, think about when somebody says something about one of them. They blow up. Oh, they like, like, they you. take complete offense to it. Mm-hmm. You know, no, I can... What do you mean I don't got a jab? I got a jab. You know what I'm saying? Like, they immediately take offense to it. Yeah. Um, it's just all the hard work that goes into it. And then it's yeah. just, like, the pride, the love for it, you know. Not to mention the fucking severity of the consequences. Right. In the fight. In the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the you know, the bare knuckle guy who just died, you know? Terrible. Just shit like that creeps in your head all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you try your best to block it out, but man, like, you know, especially when you wake up and you read something like that, it's like, oh, man. You know? I know. Yeah. Just, us fighters know. We just know, like, the, 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 Severity of what we do, what it could be, you know. Um, we're not playing in there, you know. That yeah. It's a. Uh, I was gonna say the thing about combat is just that it's just that you don't know what could happen in there. It's the most humbling sport ever, combat sports. Just any combat sport. Sure. Uh, you you've seen things happen to the best of the best. You know they they fall off like when Sarah, you know, beat GSP. Like you know. It's just anything can happen on that night. Wilder getting knocked out by Fury, you know. So yeah, it's just it's anyway. that night. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Or that night it is. Yeah, exactly. It's like maybe some other time Deontay beats Fury or GSP beats Sarah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't get KO'd, but on that yeah. night, that there's so many different dynamics. Like there's two fighters. Each fighter trained a certain way, has a certain skill set, which we've been talking about. And then now you get into what they're thinking, what is going on in their head. That's the shit nobody sees. So, like, right. to say... That's why betting on fights is insane. Like, is. I, <laughs> I do it because it's the only sport I really follow anymore. But um, to say that, all right, this guy's style matches up well, let me bet him... He could be having doubts. He could have an injury we don't know about. He could be... There's some shit bothering him that could fuck him up tonight. Just tonight. Maybe they fight again 30 more times and he wins 29. But that night, he lost. It's crazy. Right, exactly. It's all about everything that lines up. Yeah. Might be dealing with something in his personal life, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. Nagging injury, whatever it may be. It's just... It's... Yeah, exactly. Uh, Master William always says it, like, you know... If someone wins a fight, it doesn't necessarily mean they were better. It just means they were better that night. Yes. You know? Exactly. That is what it is. Kind of like in football, any given Sunday type rule, you know? It's right. true. Any, in football, one play could cost you the game. Yeah. Right? You're about to... It's, it's a tie game. Right? You, you fumble the ball, that's it. The same thing with fighting. One mistake could cost you. And fighters know that. And that's, that's what it is. That's really what it is. Yeah. A punch you don't see coming, a kick you don't see coming, you know. And there's no one to blame, like a football team. Exactly. You could be like, "Our oh, fucking running back dropped that shit, and now we lost." <laughs> right. And now it's like you dropped your hand and you got KO'd, and that's <laughs> like, what happened. Yeah. And your family's there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and your friends there. You gotta scare them all. And your coach, who's you know been with you all training camps there, and it's yeah. just tough. Us fighters, like, we're competitive. Don't want to go out like that. Yeah, it's high stakes. Exactly. Very high stakes. Right. Now, I always ask um, a fighter, anytime I have one on here, do you cut a lot of weight? I do not personally, no. Okay. No, not yet. I might drop down to 35 in a few fights. I might not. Yeah. Do you find that um, it helps you to, uh, to... to fight at a weight that you feel comfortable at rather than depleting your... Like, have you... Let me ask this. Have you ever had to cut weight? And could you compare between how you felt cutting and
and how you felt not cutting when it comes to performance? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I walk around like 55, 60. I hover between that mm -hmm. all the time. And I cut down to 45, so it's not a huge cut, but it's enough of a cut to feel it. Right. But I feel good at 45. I feel, I feel uh, like I don't lose any power, any movement. I feel good. I don't feel like I'm depleting myself too much at all. Especially when I'm dieting down on the, you know, and um, so it really comes off easily, and I have no problem cutting f 45. Um, yeah, I did my jujitsu super fight at my natural weight, and I probably would almost rather fight at 45. It's kind of weird to say, but yeah, mm -hmm. right. size thing. Yeah. 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 Well, it's good that you don't blow up, yeah, right? No. Like, I think uh, Patty Pimblet, he fights at 45. Right now, he's like 190. That's crazy. And you're like, God damn. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that to myself, personally. Right. You know, get that way up and then have to <sighs> shed it. Oh, that would suck. I don't... That's brutal. Exactly. Who the fuck wants to I do imagine that? Imagine, exactly. Why do you... Yeah. I don't want to do that to myself. <laughs> Just, like, keep the weight down, like... Right. Khabib had problems with it too. Did he? He had at, at first he would miss weight. Um, one of the Ferguson fights that got canceled was because he was in the hospital cutting weight. Oh wow! So after that, I think it was after that particular instance, he's like, "All right, I got to stop blowing up," because he would get up to like eighty five. Exactly. Now you got to cut thirty pounds to fifty five. Like, yeah. ugh, that's brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. And I mean, I feel like even if uh, I did decide to go down to thirty five, I'd adjust my diet. Yeah. I'm sure I was even lower, maybe 150. Yeah, walk you know, around at a comfortable. I don't, I, I'm not comfortable with cutting too much weight. I, yeah, I don't, no. <laughs> that shit is bad. Plus, there's an art. I mean, first of all, that's where most of the deaths happen in, right. in combat sports mm. is cutting weight. Mm. Um, then there's the ethics thing about it, like should kids in high school be cutting weight, kids in college be cutting weight, mm. stunting their growth, that type of thing. And then, I mean, really, it's kind of cheating. Kind of. Like, it's legal. Right. It's legal, but, like, think about it. When Conor McGregor would get down to 145, he was, one, he was 145 pounds for, like, 10 minutes. Yeah. And now he's the 145-pound champion. Like, all the other guys he's fighting <clears throat> probably cut, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds and he's at 170 walking around. Right. Got or like Darren Till. He fought Cowboy. He got they fought at 170 and he, the night that they fought he was 202. That's nuts. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's a crazy advantage. It's an insane advantage. It is. It is um My question is is like do you retain all your power? Like, you know, <laughs> is it thing. worth it in the fight? That's right. the thing. The, that that uh like, putting on that much weight, is that good for your athleticism? Is that good for your tank? Mm. You know? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's... That's... I feel like weight cutting um, in the early stages of a fighter's career is, like, the scariest part. Um, because as you get more money, you get more notoriety, you can have a nutritionist, you can have a guy who specializes in weight cutting and that right. type of thing. And it gets a little more scientific. It makes the process a little easier. Um, whereas you hear it all the time, most guys they just wing it. Yeah, they're like I'm just gonna stop eating, sit in a sauna, drink water all day, and hopefully I don't die before. Whatever the you gotta do. Yeah, whatever you gotta do. And yeah, um, honestly, yeah, like it, it's sad to say, but yeah, without paying a nutritionist and all of that, yeah, like half of it is guesswork. You're kind of like you know you're not counting macros, and you know you're just kind of like okay, this is where I'm at today. This is what I'm eating today how much I'm gonna work out today yeah see what I weigh in the morning type of thing you know but uh yeah some people do have a good feel for it they're like yeah, yeah. some people have done it for years right. and they're like yeah I know what to do right I know what to eat I know what makes me feel good I know what keeps me energetic right yeah. I used to wrestle with a kid in high school who um I forget what I think he would cut to 115 or some shit like that but he, off season, he was like 160. Like he was a decent sized kid. Jeez. But he would like progressively, that's fucking big, like <laughs> to cut to 115. Right. 
and uh, and like he would progressively in the summer lose weight, lose weight, and then the season would come, and he's still like 140. So every week is a battle. Like every week he's cutting weight. So this motherfucker would put bags on his on himself and sit in a sauna and jump rope, and I'm like, this kid, yeah. how how good is that for you? Right, exactly. You know? That's. That's the reason I didn't wrestle in high school. Just uh, I played football. Yeah. And then, you know, I would talk to buddies that I knew that did wrestle, and they'd be like, "Yeah, you probably, you know, go down to this uh, weight." And I was just like, "No, I'm not cutting weight." Right. Like I play football, I'm not gonna drop weight. That's insane. Like I need to gain weight. It's complete anything. opposite. Right. <laughs> um. So that's why I didn't. I, I mean, wasn't appealing to me. Starving myself. I was like, "Nah." Yeah. Nah. I just. Now, do you, I don't think it's good for for kids, especially. I feel like that's that should change, especially at the high school level. I definitely do. Right. There's um, a lot more recently. The uh, fighters, once they get to a pro level, uh, and even before that, um, they take being in shape very seriously. Mm-hmm. Most of them do. Mm-hmm. Where back in the day, it was like, all right, we'll uh, train for a fight. We'll train in camp. We'll get in shape. And afterwards, we fuck off. (laughs) But um, it seems like now fighters are realizing that this is like a pro. Like you got to be a pro. You got to be professional. If you're a if you're an accountant and it's your day off, but the office is like, "Yo, we need you to come in." You can't be like, "Oh no, I don't have you know, I I forgot all my accounting stuff, or I don't have any of my equipment." You got to be ready to go yeah. and that comes with being a fighter like if you're not always in shape if you're not ready to fight then I mean what are you doing it for exactly you know very true very true and it's just like yeah um, the sport's always evolving too man so if you're not in the gym you're missing out yeah you know you just you can always be getting better right always be getting better and there's a difference between training and staying in shape yeah like you can train all the time, but you can fuck off on your diet. Very true. On your sleep. Very true. All that shit. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're always worried about that and always... And it's hard, but yes. that's the lifestyle. Yeah. If you're going to be a fighter, be a motherfucking fighter. That's what you, you know? signed up for. Exactly. Yeah. Do, it. Do it to the max. I agree. 100%. And I feel like once you get to that pro level, that switch like turns on. Yeah. Um, however, I mean, you're always in good fucking shape regardless <laughs> it seems like you you do that already yeah you know what I'm saying like, exactly I had one of my buddies tell me he's like man I think the most impressive thing about you is just like you know you treating it like like the pro level at the amateur level and I I did like you know I um, always approached like every matchup every weight cut the same like you know professionally I feel like just doing what I have to do no excuses doing right. getting it done Making sure I'm sleeping good, making sure everything around me is taken care of, right? So I can focus on fighting. Yeah, right, exactly. Because right. once you, um, I was watching a video. You might have seen it too, uh, where Uriah Faber is talking about um, a class that he just finished coaching, and it was a pro class. And he's like, all the technique, all the shape, all the dieting, all the other stuff. You're not going to get that here. I'm not going to help you with any of that. Like, you should be embraced. If you're serious about being do, doing this and I let you in this pro class, all that other stuff, you got to worry about on your own time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And just encouraging living a, a, a healthy lifestyle yeah. throughout. Right. Um, I feel like for fighters, it's definitely, definitely important to do that. I feel like where fighters sometimes get lost is just uh, trying to treat the mental, you know? Mm. Like, you know, fighting is stressful. So some some fighters need a certain escape, if yeah, you will, yeah, yeah. right? A certain void that they have to fill in right. between fights, right? So I feel like that's where some fighters might get out of shape, lose focus. Yeah. They're like, all right, I just went through that stressful period. Let me kind of de-stress, kind of... But it is dangerous. Yeah. Because if you allow yourself to fall too deep into it, man, good luck. Good. Yeah, because there's another person that's... Not doing that. Yeah. 
and and looking to take your spot. You better believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's you know, that's where the hunger comes from. Mm-hmm. Is the training and knowing that there's somebody else that could could take you out. Exactly. Now I feel once you get to the pro level, it's like now it's some serious shit. Do you see yourself? I know we're here talking and we're young. Um, I know you're still in school, but do you see yourself eventually making a career out of it? And, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Um, taking it a fight at a time, man, I want to go out there and I want to be impressive, you know? So, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So you see yourself, you know? Because for me, I went to school uh, to make my family happy, to say, hey, I got, you know, something behind me. God forbid any of the other stuff I work out, this podcast don't work out, other endeavors that, you know, I got the degree, I can do something with it. Right. Worst case. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's why I, I am in school. It's my last semester now, finishing up. Yeah. Finally getting my bachelor's after this. So, you know, I, I, I have taken a different route with the fight game, like, you know, with uh, schooling and just, like, having to work around that. It's different. For, yeah. Uh, you know, for uh, fighters who have to get it on their own, essentially, you know. Right. So that's why it's kind of been a slow grind, but it, it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's it. Well, the hardest part's the beginning. Not only because of, you know, I, not only because you're a beginner, but because you're still figuring everything out. Right. Like, is this going to be what I'm going to do for my livelihood? Exactly. We'll see. Right, right now, I do it like I train. I want to be in shape. Being a pro, you get paid. It's yeah. pretty cool. Right. <laughs> um, exactly. You know, so it's... Uh, that's the most important thing is the journey and figuring out when and where to pull back, push in. Um, you know, now that you're making money or now that you can make money as a pro, maybe you don't have to work at a job as much. Right. And now you can devote more time to training, getting better at that. Right. You know? Or like just a different schedule all around, just not having the school thing. That too. Right, you know, so. Right. It's all up from there, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, been working around it the whole time, but getting it done. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that builds, you know, that builds character. Right. You can't just be put in a spot. Like, you got to work toward... Like, think about if right now they said, all right, you're going to fight um, Alexander Volkanovsky. Right. Like, you'd be, like, be like, oh, shit. I'll just listen. blow my head off. Right. Like, fuck this. Listen, hold up. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, or anything. Hey, no. here's here's $2 million. Yeah. You'd be like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? Right. No, there's levels, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Um, but I do plan on going deep with it. Yeah. You know, up yeah, yeah, my yeah. level, up in my skills. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's, that's what they say. Don't get into it if you ain't going to try and make something happen, oh, exactly. you know? exactly. Especially fighting. Before, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, my man. Thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me, We bro. did this thing. <laughs> you've been uh, you've been grinding real fucking hard. We see it. Um, I don't train at Triforce anymore, but when we were there, you were there all the fucking time. Or when I was there, I saw you all the time. You you are a uh, embodiment of hard work when it comes to moving on. Thank you. Bro. You know. So and and we see it. Everyone that follows you see it, and that's great. Um, is there anything that you would like to say before we wrap this thing up? Actually, where can people find you? Um, on Instagram at Tyreem D T Y R I M E D, uh, Facebook Tyreem De Silva, um, yeah. And November seventh, it's November not 7th. official, official, but right, yeah. Um, it's it's official. Okay. Just waiting for them to put everything out there. Gotcha. And then yeah, November seventh right. in Providence. Yeah. So oh, in Providence for CES. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. so it's oh, so it's for CES. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fucking sick. Yeah. That'll be dope. Yeah. It's on a Sunday. Nice schedules. So fuck that football. Come watch a show. Let's go watch a fight. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> well, all right, guys. Um, follow him for the uh, deets on that because I'm sure you'll share all that shit. Yes, sir. Um, and then follow me. Links in the description. You know the deal. We're done, guys. Peace. <laughs>